Come behold the wondrous mystery in the dawning of the King. He, the theme of heaven's praises, robed in frail humanity. In our longing, in our darkness, now the light of life has come. Look to Christ who condescended, took on flesh to ransom us. Come behold the wondrous mystery, he the perfect son of man, in his living, in his suffering, never traced or stain of sin, see the true and better Adam, come to save the hell
waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every We praise you, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the honor. Be present with all of us. 
gathered here and in homes all across the area. Be present with us, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Joining our voices together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel chapter 39, verses 21 to 29. A reading from Ezekiel chapter 39, verses 21 to to 29. And I will set my glory among the nations, and all the nations shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid on them. The house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. And the nations shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they dealt so treacherously with me that I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their advers adversaries. And they all fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanness and their transgressions and hid my face from them. Therefore, 
Thus says the Lord, Now I will restore the fortunes of Jacob and have mercy on the whole house of Israel, and I will be jealous for my holy name. They shall forget their shame and all the treachery they have practiced against me when they dwell securely in the land with none to make them afraid. When I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them from their enemies' land, and through them have vindicated my holiness in the sight of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God, because I sent them into exile among the nations and then assembled them into their own land. I will leave none of them remaining among the nations anymore, and I will not hide my face anymore from them when I pour out my spirit upon the house of Israel, declares the Lord God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's psalm is Psalm 68. You'll find it in your prayer book on page 351. We'll be reading verses 1 through 20 in unison. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him also flee from him. As the smoke vanishes, so shall you drive them away. And as wax melts before the fire, So let the ungodly perish before the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God, and let them also be merry and joyful. O sing unto the God, and sing praises unto his name. Magnify him who rides upon the heavens. The Lord is his name. Rejoice before him. He is father of the fatherless, and defends the cause of the widows, God in his holy habitation. He is the God who gives the solitary home and brings the prisoners out of captivity, but lets the rebellious dwell in a desert land. O God, when you went forth before the people, you went through the wilderness. The earth shook and the heavens poured forth rain at the presence of God. Even as Sinai also was moved at the presence of God, who is the God of Israel. You, O God, sent a gracious rain upon your inheritance and refreshed the land when it was weary. Your congregation found a dwelling there. For you, O God, of your goodness have provided for the poor. The God gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed the tidings. Kings with their armies fled. They fled, and the woman at home divided the spoil. Though you have laid among the sheepfolds, yet shall you be like the wings of a dove that are covered with silver and whose feathers shine like gold. When the Almighty scattered kings, it was as if it was snowed in Zalman. As the hill of Bashan, so is God's hill, even a hill, the hill of Bashan. I look with envy, you high hills. This is God's hill on which it pleases him to dwell. Surely the Lord will abide on it forever. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels, And the Lord has come from Sinai into the holy place. You have gone up on high. You have led captivity captive and received gifts from men, even from your enemies, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Praise be the Lord daily. Even the God who helps us and pours his benefits upon us. He is our God, the God from whom salvation comes. God is the Lord by whom we escape death. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was. 
The second reading this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. The word of the Lord. Sequence in this morning is a beautiful for spacious skies.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, as it is written in the book of John, chapter 17, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they know you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you, ha you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Heavenly Father, we are truly grateful for the many blessings you give us in life, and we praise you and thank you this morning for this opportunity to worship you, the joy and privilege of being able to, to gather, even though we can't be together physically all at once at this moment, we're thankful, Lord, that you are present in our homes. Father, we're also mindful of this day, mindful of all that's going on around us in the world, but also know that on this eve of Memorial Day, we remember the fallen. So allow us, Lord, to remember those who have gone before us. But as we gather here now, Lord, to hear your word, I pray that you would open the eyes of our heart, the ears of understanding, that we might truly receive those things that you wish to speak to your people today. Give us, Lord, a, a sensitivity to, the, to your work, to your hand at work in the world around us. And allow us, Lord, to respond in obedience to your call for us to grow deeper in our walk with you. Be with us now in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. 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 Well, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's a beautiful day today, and if these were ordinary times, uh, we would be gathering with our brothers and sisters uh, from Gales Ferry United Methodist Church. It's been our recent uh, tradition over the last few years to gather with them in the corner in between the 8 a.m. and the 10.30 service uh, to uh, remember the fallen and remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for this country, for our country, uh, for the sake of freedom. And uh, we, we always have a, a wonderful gathering on the corner there, just right across the cemetery. And unfortunately, we're not able to do that uh, today. Uh, but today is the last Sunday in the season 
of Easter, and next week we prepare ourselves, well, next week we observe Pentecost. Uh, This past Thursday we had the observance of the Feast of the Ascension when Christ ascended into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father. And he told us to wait for the Holy Spirit who is to come. And so we're now in that 10-day period known as Ascension Tide, the last 10 days of the season of Easter. During the season of Easter, we've been looking at the life of Christ post-resurrection, his interactions with his disciples after he rose from the grave. But in our epistle readings, we have also been looking at first Peter as sort of a hidden theme, a hidden undercurrent during this season of of Easter as giving us words of wisdom to guide and direct us as to what life is like post-resurrection and how we should live our lives. What are some ways we live our lives in light of the present world that we live in? And so last week we we dove into 1 Peter looking at some key verses looking at some key verses that dealt with suffering, that dealt with living under duress, that dealt with living during difficult times. So when you look at 1 Peter, and you look at this moment that we are living in, in our culture and around the world, this pandemic, 1 Peter has a lot of relevance and has a lot of things to say to us. So I want to highlight some key verses before we look at our passage in 1 Peter chapter 4 today. If you have your Bibles with you, and I hope you do at home, if you'll turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13. I want to show you a couple of things here before we look at 1 Peter chapter 4. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13. 13. Again, remember this was written in a time of duress and specifically in this specific setting they were under persecution and it was indeed a time of suffering within the body of Christ. And so Peter says this, Therefore, preparing your minds for action, And being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Preparing your minds for action, being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I like the way it's written in the New Living Translation in this specific passage. It says, and this is in an older translation of the the New Living, it says, so think clearly. Think clearly and exercise self-control. As you prepare yourselves for action, as you get ready for what is to come, We as a people need to be able to think clearly. Part of preparing our hearts and minds for action is having clarity. And so he says here in verse 1, and being sober-minded. Being sober-minded. In fact, turn with me to 1 Peter 4, verse 7. First Peter 4, verse 7. Take a look at this. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and what? And sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. He says that a couple of times in First Peter, to be sober-minded. I think he's telling us something. Let's go back to that passage in, in 1 Peter 1.13. I believe when he's saying here, be sober-minded, he's not necessarily talking about, hey, don't be drinking, don't be, don't be partaking of, of, of beverages. But what he's saying is keep your minds 
clear from intoxicating influences. Keep your minds clear from intoxicating influences. And what we have to keep in mind during this moment that we're living in, during this pandemic, is what are you downloading and putting into your mind? There's all sorts of noise. There's all sorts of opinions. There's all sorts of ideas floating around right now. And what are you allowing to influence you? I think it's important for us to grasp this, particularly in this time of duress. What are you allowing to influence you? See, the Bible's telling us here in 1 Peter is for us to be sober-minded, for us to think clearly And so he says here in this other half of verse 13 is, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Who are you placing your hope in during this time? Is your heart fixed on Jesus? Is your heart fixed on the gospel? Is your heart fixed on the truths of God? Or are you allowing yourself to be intoxicated by external influences that have nothing to do with the good news of Jesus Christ? It's real easy during this time to be overloaded with all sorts of information that's coming our way. But brothers and sisters, under duress, we are called to think clearly. We are called to be sober-minded. We are called to be free from intoxicating influences that we might set our hearts and minds fully on the hope of Jesus Christ. In verse 7 of chapter 4, where he also says to be sober-minded, he says, be sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. For the sake of your prayers. Think with clarity. Be sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. So, let's now look at this particular reading, this appointed reading for this day, beginning at verse 12 of chapter 4. Verse 12 of chapter 4 says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you. Notice what it says there? Don't be surprised. Now in this day and age that we're, we're living in during this pandemic, there's one word that's kind of been introduced into our vocabulary. It's called the new normal. And for some people, there's an aversion to that word because it's like as if though something was being imposed upon us that we, we, no, we can't accept this. Follow me here for a second. Follow my, my, where, I'm, where I'm going with this, okay? What if this new normal that we're in isn't new. What if it's just new to us? You see, throughout the history of the world, throughout the span of of the millennia and throughout time, people, societies, and cultures have always been in a state of some duress in a state of some suffering or in a a state of some oppression or in a state of some sort of challenge. Pandemics aren't new. Wars aren't new. Oppression isn't new. Suffering isn't new. And perhaps it was what's strange is that world we were living in before the pandemic. Perhaps what's strange is relative comfort and relative ease and relative convenience It's not to say we didn't have any problems in the pre-pandemic world. But if you're honest with yourselves, as a culture and as a society, we had it pretty good. We had a lot of luxuries and conveniences and more than half the things we probably spent our time in had nothing to do with eternity. It had everything to do with our own entertainment 
and the fulfillment of our own dreams. But see, in this post-pandemic world, we're going, this is the new normal. We don't like it. But what if that has been normal all along? Beloved, do not be surprised. Don't be surprised at this, at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you. Now, as I was preparing this message and I was looking at the next passage, I went at the next verse, I went, whoa. Because this is not our natural response to suffering. This is not our natural response to difficulty. It says, verse 13, so, but in verse, in verse 12, it says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as if though something strange were happening to you. Notice this, verse 13, but rejoice. <laughs> New Living Translation says, and this is where it just kind of caused me to pause, it says, but be very glad. But be very glad. When this pandemic hit, did you go say, did you say rejoice, be very glad? I very much doubt that many of us did that. In fact, we said, this is strange. What's going on? Scripture is telling us, don't be surprised when fiery trials come your way. Instead, be very glad. Insofar as you share in Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. You see, one of the things we have to do in moments like this, when we don't understand what is fully going on, the question is not what is Congress going to do. The question isn't what is the government going to do. The question isn't what kind of vaccine, although those are all important things and have to be done in the natural world, the question is, what is God doing in our midst? What is God doing to form your life? And how can you respond in such a way that you share in Christ's redemptive purposes for this moment in history and this moment in time. That is the most important thing you could be asking yourself right now. And stop focusing on the intoxicating influences of opinions and perspectives. What is God doing at this moment in your life, in the life of this particular church, and in the life of the body in Christ, of the body of Christ, throughout the world. You see, at all times and in all places, God is always at work that His redemptive purposes might be fulfilled. And how are we now on mission with the work of the Holy Spirit in this particular moment? Instead, be exceedingly glad. This is not to dismiss real pain. This is not to dismiss those who are struggling financially. Remember, this is supposed to be a little painful. But the Scripture tells us not to be surprised when we go through fiery trials. Verse 19 says this in 1 Peter chapter 4. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful Creator while doing good. During this moment in time, this season, this, this moment in history that we're in, are you entrusting your soul to a faithful Creator while doing good?
If you think Peter was the only one who talks about suffering, turn back just a little bit to James. James chapter 1, verse 2. You might be like, well, that's Peter. How in the world can you find joy in suffering? James chapter 1, verse 2 says this. You know, Peter, Peter said, be exceedingly glad. Well, James says this. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. What? You mean I'm not supposed to get angry? You mean I'm not supposed to complain? You mean I'm not supposed to vent and and murmur? No, it says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect. During this pandemic, joyfully embrace everything that God has in store for you in this season, even if it's challenging for a little bit. So that your steadfastness, the steadfastness that that God wants to build up inside of you will have its full effect. And that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Verse 12 says this in James chapter 1, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. My prayer for us, beyond the headlines, beyond all that we're hearing every day on the six o'clock news, is that we ultimately see that the, big, the biggest story going on right now is the good news. And it's about you drawing closer to Christ. It's about you growing in your relationship with Him. And it's about others coming to know who Jesus is. You see, the epicenter of all of human history is Jesus Christ Himself. So brothers and sisters, do not count it strange when you face fiery trials. Instead, count it all joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our Archbishop Foley, for our Bishop Julian, and for all the clergy and the people of our diocese and congregations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, I pray that you would continue to keep our missionaries refreshed and strengthened. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially our President Donald. I pray, Lord, that your truth and your truth only would be spoken in our nation's capital and in the capitals in the states of the United States. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, we pray especially for John and Brett, Joe, Art and Judy, Candace, Joan, Steve, Ken, Karen and Mike, Jamie and Diane, Barry, and Gloria. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I have an additional uh, petition, the prayer of deliverance from the coronavirus by Pete Gregg in 24-7. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you to protect us from the spread of the coronavirus. You are powerful and merciful. Let this be our prayer. Have mercy on me, my God. Have mercy on me. For in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. Jehovah Shalom, Lord of Peace. We remember those living in coronavirus hotspots and those currently in isolation. May they know your presence in their isolation, your peace in their turmoil, and your patience in their waiting. Prince of Peace, you are powerful and merciful. Let this be their prayer. 
May your mercy come quickly to meet us, for we are in desperate need. Help us, God, our Savior, for the glory of your name. O God of comfort and counsel, we pray for those who are grieving, reeling from the sudden loss of loved ones. May they find your fellowship in their suffering, your comfort in their loss, and your hope in their despair. We name before you those known to us who are vulnerable and scared, the frail, the sick, and the elderly. God of all comfort, you are powerful and merciful. May this be our prayer. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. Jehovah Rapa, God who heals, we pray for all medical professionals dealing daily with the intense pressures of this crisis. Grant them resilience and weak rariness, discernment and diagnosis, and compassion upon compassion as they care. We thank you for the army of researchers working steadily and quietly towards a cure. Give them clarity, serendipity, an unexpected breakthrough today. Would you rise above this present darkness as the sun of righteousness with healing in your rays? May this be our prayer. Sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm, nothing is too hard for you. God of all wisdom, we pray for our leaders, the World Health Organization, national governments and local leaders too, heads of schools, hospitals, and other institutions. Since you have positioned these people in public service for this hour, we ask you to grant them wisdom beyond their own wisdom to contain this virus, faith beyond their own faith to fight this fear, and strength beyond their own strength to sustain vital institutions through this time of turmoil. God of all wisdom and counsel, you are powerful and merciful. May this be our prayer. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. I bless you in the words of Psalm 91. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. May El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty, who loves you, protect you. May Jesus Christ, his Son who died for you, save you. And may the Holy Spirit, who broods over the chaos and fills you with his presence, intercede for you and you for others at this time. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. On this Memorial Day weekend, we pray. O King and Judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our armed forces who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accepts its disciplines. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to confess our sins, let's take a moment to take stock of this past week, all of our interactions with people, all of our thoughts and our attitudes and areas where we have sinned and fallen short, we lay them now before Almighty God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to you everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Well, brothers and sisters, it's now time for the peace. Um, just want to give you a heads up. At the end of the service, I have a, a brief special announcement to, to share with everyone. Um, but uh, during the peace, greet everyone online. Say hello in the chat room. Some of you are on Facebook. Uh, send your greetings there in the chat room or send a text to someone uh, from this parish family or someone who's not and just wish them the peace of the Lord. So the peace of the Lord be always with you and with your spirit. Turn and greet one another with the sign of God's peace. Brothers and sisters, remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. For God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints as you still do. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God.
shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you Oh 
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through your dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his most glorious resurrection appeared to his apostles and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, there we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full, Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Almighty Father, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who were invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. For those receiving at home and are, na are not able to participate physically, please join me in the prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things. 
and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you together with all your faithful people gathered around your holy table at Bishop Seabury Church. And I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Ace, this is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it was given to you. May I preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. This is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it was given to you. May it preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, folks, just um, I have a, someone who's going to share a brief testimony, and then I have a, a, an announcement uh, to make. So, Jesse Primit, if you are on, and as you, many of you know, we, from time to time we give testimony um, about the work of God in our lives or the power of prayer. And so if Jessie is on, if we can find her, if she could share a little bit about her testimony and the power of prayer. Hi, friends. So a power of a testimony of how God answers prayers. My childhood best friend's name was Frankie. So Frankie and I both have the same beginning letter of our last name. I'm a right. He was a wisdom. So every single class, we would... We'd sit next to each other and Frankie and my mom were really close and Frank was my rock when my mom passed away and Frankie even wrote my mom a poem and put it in her casket but the biggest difference between Frankie and me were I loved God and had a relationship Frankie was against religion he didn't believe in God or anything so I went off to music school and then Frankie stayed home in Pennsylvania. And every time I would come home on a break with Brett, the three of us would always do things together. So it was always me, Frankie and Brett, uh, you know, while we were all still in college. And then I graduate and then Frankie goes off into the Air Force and we lose connection for a really long time. But then Facebook came along and thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, and so Frankie and I always, you know, kept in touch through Facebook and we text now and then. And then uh, finally, like for a long time, he's been on my mind and I texted him and I asked him, I haven't seen you or your wife on Facebook at all lately. Are you guys okay? So Frank said, oh yeah, Jesse, we're fine. We've just been busy with moving and this and that. And, and how are you? How's Brett and the kids? So I shared with Frankie all of all the stuff that, um, that Brett's been going through. And again, keep in the back of your mind, Frankie hates religion, he does not love God, he doesn't believe in God. So after I explained to Frankie everything that happened with Brett and what we've been going through since September, Frankie said, I'll pray for you. Pray for me. And I wrote, you go to church? Frankie said, yeah, Jesse, I go to church and I'm the drummer in, um, in my worship band. I couldn't stop crying. I, I couldn't believe it that this man, this boy who turned into a man and a husband that did not love God and didn't have a relation with him and chose not to have anything to do with God now goes to church. So he said that he hated religion until he met his pastor and other people from, from that church which is a huge testimony that the building doesn't make the church. It's the people of God that make the church. So I asked if his uh, wife goes to church and he said, no, it's not her time. It's not her walk. When, uh, when she's ready, then she'll go. And all I can do is pray for her. I, I was devastated. I, I, I couldn't stop crying. And then Frankie wrote, Looking back in my life, I can see how God was working in my life and helping me break down the walls that I have put up. Hmm. I am still a work in progress, but I am surely on a better path. So another kicker with this story is I've been praying for Frankie and salvation for the past probably 15 years, every single day, every single night, every single Sunday with the prayers of the people, I've been praying for him. And this is so huge because I want you all to understand and all to realize and all to taste the beauty and love that comes from, from prayer. God hears us and he answers us. It's in his time though, not our time. Because if it was my time, Frankie would have had a, re a relationship back when we were in high school. 
but that wasn't his time. It's, it's now. So God is so good. Thank you, Father Jay, for letting me share my story. Amen. One of the reasons I love that story so much that, that Jesse had shared is that she, sh she shared with me when she was telling that story is that every single Sunday during the prayers of the people, she would lift up his name. So although we go through the prayers of the people Sunday in and Sunday out, and we're wondering, hey, we're just kind of repeating the same thing over and over again, Jesse's persistent prayer, I believe, over 15 years, daily prayer as well as just lifting, up, lifting him up before the prayers of the people, had a, a tremendous impact in seeing her friend Frankie come to know the Lord. So don't so easily dismiss anything that you offer up, even during the prayers of the people, if you simply whisper and utter a name of someone that you're praying for. So let's just keep that in mind whenever we pray the prayers of the people. So Jesse, thank you again uh, for sharing that. Um, over the last uh, few weeks, we've been sending out a couple of emails from the church, not just to our Bishop Seabury family here, but to our Holy Trinity and Christ Church uh, brothers and sisters, thank you all for those who are completing uh, and have completed the survey. I think our last, some of our last couple of emails had a misplaced link, and rather than taking you to the survey, it was going to our YouTube channel. So I think we've fixed that, and we'll perhaps send out one more email uh, to give you the opportunity, and then we're going to close out the survey and, and take some of that data and take some of that information as we plan and prepare uh, for the future. Um, but here's, here's what I want to share with all of you today. And I want to read you a, first a quote from St. Francis de Sala. Uh, St. Francis de Sala, um, this particular quote um, I saw emblazoned upon a wall at the Holy Family Retreat Center in West Hartford, um, and I see it every year when I go up with our young people to the St. Michael's Conference. But it really stood out to me one year. And here's the quote. Pay careful attention to these words. Never be in a hurry. Do everything quietly and in a calm spirit. Do not lose your inner peace for anything whatsoever even if your whole world seems upset. Never be in a hurry. Do everything quietly and in a calm spirit. Do not lose your inner peace for anything whatsoever, even if your whole world seems upset. So here at Bishop Seabury and, I'm, and with our sister churches at uh, Holy Trinity and at Christ Church, of course, um, all of us, we continue to pray continually um, as we consider our plans for regathering and when that time is right, what it's going to look like when we regather for in-person worship services. I want to thank everyone who's completed the survey. It's going to be very helpful to us. At this moment, we don't have a specific regathering date yet, but we do have some next steps that I'd like to announce. First and foremost, online worship services will continue. Um, even after this pandemic, once we've passed this, I don't think we're ever going back to where we're not going to be broadcasting our services. So you can be assured online services in some form, whether Zoom or Facebook Live, will continue. But moving slowly, we're gonna take our first baby steps next week, Pentecost Sunday. And I believe the baby steps we're going to take is going to be a very thoughtful and reverent approach. Next Sunday afternoon, after our online worship services, or online worship service, our building will be available by appointment for personal or family prayer and for receiving extended Holy Communion. Let me repeat. Next Sunday afternoon, after the online worship service, our building will be available to you by appointment for personal or family prayer 
and for receiving extended Holy Communion. Uh, this is a small step, and basically what we're doing is making our space, our sanctuary, our nave, available to you for personal and family prayer, and for you to receive extended Holy Communion. The times we're looking at is from 1 to 4 on Sunday in 15-minute increments. So what we're going to do is we're going to have up to two time slots available to you in 15-minute increments, uh, depending on the size of your family, of course, either you or the family size. Um, we'll have either two units in here for 15 minutes at a time, and it'll be a time for you to come into your worship space to pray with you, you and your family, uh, and also to receive Holy Communion. Many of you have not received Holy Communion in several, in several weeks, almost two months. So this is our opportunity to do that. Um, we're going to take all the necessary precautions in here, spacing out chairs when you come in, wearing masks when you come in, and then specific instructions on how you receive communion I'll share with you during that time. So it'll be again from like 1 to 4 on Sunday afternoon. We're going to put a sign-up sheet, sign sheet out this week and you could sign up for a 15-minute slot. And during that 15-minute slot, we'll either have two individuals or two units, an individual family unit, just depending on the size, and we'll ensure appropriate social distancing here. Uh, we're going to prepare everything carefully. Uh, we'll be receiving communion uh, in one kind, the bread, but a drop of wine will be placed up on it before it's, pre before it's consecrated. Um, so full so social distancing, sanitary measures, protocols will be in place. Uh, so more details will go out this week on how this will work for you, how you sign up, um, and then how you and your family can come up here to pray uh, in 15-minute intervals. Again, your health is very important to us. So if you are high risk, we continue to encourage you uh, to take all the necessary precautions and even stay home if you must. Uh, no pressure for anyone to have to feel like they have to be here or come, okay? So we'll do this for a few weeks. Prayer in here, individual and family prayer, extended Holy Communion. My, my basic rhythm for all of this is steady, slow, but forward-looking. All of our decisions have been prayerfully made and has been done in consultation with the diocese and our bishop. And this specific plan has been discussed with the bishop, and we have his support. Uh, for those of you at Holy Trinity and at Christ Church who are hearing this, uh, we'll be reaching out to you in the next couple of days uh, to kind of discuss how Father Stan or myself will come to your location if you so desire, and we'll be able to offer as well um, a time of prayer and extended communion, um, again, coming in um, in small group sizes. So that quote again from St. Francis de Sala, never be in a hurry, do everything quietly and in a calm spirit. Do not lose your inner peace for anything whatsoever, even if your whole world seems upset. Amen. Father Stan, you have anything? Yeah, I do. Reminder here for uh, Christ Church Anglican, uh, we have a vestry meeting today at 1.30. We're going to be Zooming it. Um, Nancy said if you had any questions, give her a call so we can get you set up on Zoom. Uh, most importantly here, don't forget your pledges. We still have bills to pay. Um, we're still going to be running the uh, Monday night Bible group on, on Zoom. I think we've gotten the kinks worked out of it now. And the same with uh, the Tuesday evening intercessory prayer and compline. So let's get together here on, with the vestry and then we can get some other things worked out. Please pay attention to what Father Jay was saying about the surveys. They're most important even for, uh, for uh, Holy Trinity on, on how we're going to get the churches opened up. Jay, Father Jay has said that uh, we have a, a, a Google guru who's going to separate those out so we know which petitions are for which church, and we'll be able to apply it that way. And let's see. 
I don't have anything else except this is the last Sunday this month. Is that not correct? No, next month, May, next Sunday is May 31st. It's a That's five, right. It's a That's five right. Sunday. Five so, Sunday this month. So birthday oh, Sunday. I tried next birthdays. Month. We're going to next Sunday. <laughs> All right. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, milestone um, during the season. And again, we're introducing next Sunday um, the opportunity to come and pray in the afternoon, open the space up for prayer and for family communion in the afternoon. More details to follow. So after the benediction, stick around in the chat room and say hello to your friends for our virtual coffee hour. Brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We are, by nature, objects of God's wrath. But yet, while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. Therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So this is good news. God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself, not counting your sins against you. God loves you. God has forgiven you. God is not mad or angry at you. And no matter what, God will never leave you or forsake you. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace, love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.